The inevitable arrival of the next series of NVIDIA graphics cards, codenamed Ampere, has started rumbling in the rumor sphere. What is expected to be called the RTX 3080 and RTX 3070 have had their first spec and feature leaks, and the timing of this is leading many to assume we may see a reveal or announcement as soon as March, when NVIDIA hosts its GTC conference, which is happening in San Jose from the 22nd of March. And that could mean they'll be in reviewers' hands, and indeed on shelves, before April ends. Hello again, I am Blunty. Thank you for clicking on my video. If you could go a step further and do the subscribe, do the bell, do the comment, do the thumb, I would appreciate that also because we must fight against the massive evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm and I need your help to do it. Please, I'm begging you. Pathetic, I know, but seems like we've got to do that as YouTubers these days. Beg, just, just interact, do the things. Just watch, do it, please. So, with GTC going on in March, and my prediction that they'll release in April, what evidence do I have to support this? Well, nearly four years ago, the GTX 1080 and GTX 1070 were announced in the first week of May 2016, and they hit shelves by the end of the same month, and a couple of weeks into June, respectively. In other words, about a month from announcement to shelf. The GeForce RTX 2000 series was announced at Gamescom on August 20th, 2018 and started shipping, you guessed it, a month later in September. So it's not much of a stretch to make the assumption, and it is just an assumption at this stage, that should the new RTX 3000 series see its first official public reveal at GTC, that it'll be a month or less before you can slam on into your frame-thirsty gaming rig. And... While I can't say much, I can say in late December last year, I was approached by a PR company who I've worked with before, who asked me quite vaguely if I'd be interested in possibly working with them on a launch of an unnamed GPU from an unnamed brand from an unnamed company, loosely around exactly this timing we're talking about. I said yes, but haven't heard anything back yet. Again, pretty vague stuff, and for all I know, it may as well be AMD's next Navi card, because Lisa Su, AMD's CEO, has been out there recently making some comments about something she's calling Big Navi, hitting us in 2020. But if I were a betting man, I'd guess this approach was more likely a GeForce card, especially now with these latest leaks and the timing thereof. The leaks are detailing two new core codes for the cards, the GA103 and GA104. The GA103, or the expected RTX 3080, apparently has 60 streaming multiprocessor arrays, 3,480 stream processors, a 320-bit video memory bus, and it appears it'll be another card with two memory variants, a 10 gig and a 20 gig, both GDDR6, of course. While the GA104 will likely be the RTX 3070, it has 48 streaming multiprocessor arrays, 3072 stream processors, a 256-bit video memory bus, and will come in an 8GB and 16GB GDDR6 variants. Nothing has been confirmed or even rumored about who will be manufacturing these chips for NVIDIA, but they are expected to be moving to the 7 nanometer process, a manufacturing process that's highly in demand from many, many companies these days and has seen a few previous products that use 7 nanometer see stock restrictions and delays and such. But all these raw numbers don't really tell us much in practical terms without more context about the architecture. I mean, just on paper, without taking into account the unknown architectural advancements or how the extra efficiency of that 7 nanometer process will bring, or just looking at the numbers, I'm seeing some comment section know-it-alls claim that the RTX 3080 will underperform compared to the RTX 2080 Ti. Lol, jeez, what's the point? Oh. I think it's a bit dumb to make such speculations on so little information, but... I also think it's probably safe to say we'll see a 10 to 20% frame rate boost over previous generation equivalents of these cards because that's usually the case. Depending on the game and where any bottlenecking may lie, we usually do see 10 to 20%-ish performance boosts over the previous generation on the NVIDIA cards. It's been reasonably consistent for a few generations now. But what I'm most interested in, beyond even more grunt to make sure when I game at 4K I can maintain the highest settings and keep stable at 60fps or more, is of course the ray tracing. 
the first generation of RTX cards with their hardware accelerated ray tracing were very enticing. And although the shiny new feature isn't what you'd call widespread in titles yet, it is becoming more so. And especially this year, we're seeing many titles with RTX already confirmed for them. And of those games that do already have it, many benefit greatly from the extra immersion it can offer. And these games have clearly demonstrated it can be more than simply a gimmick or a bullet point on a marketing sheet. And of course, that was one of the hater, bait, naysayer, mealy mouth criticisms of RTX when it was first announced in that it was just... It was just something fancy and pretty, but didn't actually make any real difference in the games. Well, now we've had a few games with it, it certainly can make a real difference in the feeling of immersion. But also, it is perfectly valid if it is just something to make the game look simply prettier, which it can and does, and I don't know why anyone would have a problem with a game looking prettier. But even though the RTX 2000 series have gone a long way to demonstrating that ray tracing and hardware accelerated ray tracing in particular is not just a gimmick, it is generation one of a brand new hardware architecture, and as we've seen recently in things like AMD's Ryzen CPU architecture, there can be a pretty significant leap forward in a generation two product in this industry. And I, for one, can hardly wait to see what NVIDIA have learned from their first splash in the RTX waters, and how much further out the boat can be pushed on this second tide, to continue the loose aquatic metaphor. And with extra base horsepower, the frame rate hit that comes with activating something as hungry as RTX ray tracing, which did take some games below their ideal frame rates when it was enabled, could be much less of an issue or even eliminated completely effectively. So, 7 nanometer second gen RTX cards, there's something to be excited for. And now is the part of the video where I encourage your interaction. So I'm going to ask you a question. What are you currently running? Are you running last gen or previous gen to that? Are you excited about RTX at all? Or are you just excited about more power? Do you want to move to 1440p? Do you want to move to 4K? Where do you sit right now? Where do you want to go? Are you even excited at all for the RTX 3000 series cards? Or are you more enticed by whatever big Navi is? Going to be an exciting year on both sides of the gaming fence. Consoles are getting exciting. PC gaming getting exciting. It's a good time to be a gamer. It's been a good time to be a gamer for a few years now, hasn't it? Thanks for watching. I am Bloody, and I will catch you next time.